Okay, according to the dictionary, to disrupt is to cause disorder or turmoil, to destroy, interrupt, break apart. Oh my. But it is also to radically change an industry, a business, a business strategy by introducing a new product or service that creates a new market. This is more like it, yeah, guys? <laughs> okay, we are joined by several disruptors here who are going to give us some advice and, and tips on how to empower them, I believe, right? To moderate this Top of the Pops panel, we have with us a business developer, a startup lover, I believe also a car lover, and a mentor and an angel investor. He's also a VP development uh, at Orange, and is in charge, amongst other things, of the Orange Fab Accelerator program. He will be joined by some of the first edition uh, of Orange Fab uh, Spain startups. Uh, please welcome Eric Tartanson. Thank you. And obviously, his panel that he's going to take care of. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the intro. Uh, I'm back at South Summit, uh, my second year. It's impressive, the change. Okay. Um, so, yes, as you said, at Orange, uh, we created Orange Startup Ecosystem. We connect startup uh, across 12 Orange Fab with business units, and we have two venture arm, uh, Orange Digital Venture and Orange Publicist Venture. So I'm delighted to introduce five companies from Orange Fab Spain. Um, so I will go one by one. So Carriot, Miguel Castillo, uh, Planet Us, Javier Aleman. Senso Vida, Fidel de la Hoya, Yomondo, Diego Pastor, and... Miguel Sanchez, Mamit. Thank you, Mamit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to start, can you please uh, introduce yourself and uh, maybe give a few metrics of your company just to give uh, to the audience some view on the, on the company? Okay. So uh, we were, we were a, a bunch of engineers. We, we wanted to build something something awesome, something profitable, but also we wanted to make it social. Uh, we started seeking uh, various uh, industries and uh, we uh, discovered that uh, there was a big opportunity in the elderly market, uh, in specifically in the telecare market. So we started uh, using um, customer development uh, methodologies to uh, to learn from, from our potential customers. We interviewed like 100 people, and then we start building. Senso uh, Vida is uh, an advanced telecare, um, uh, advanced telecare system that allows people to live independently at home and enjoy their lives. We use sensors to, to, uh, to, locate, uh, to locate elderly people at home, and uh, we can automatically detect potential risk situations based on the, on the data we, we, we got from the sensors. And also, the second pain we, we solve is the, uh, the stress on their families. We give real-time information for their relatives. Basically, that's it. So, at Momit, uh, we design, manufacture, and sell smart and connected devices with a strong focus in the energy efficiency. We are a, a 33 full-time workers, amazing, amazing people, two of them are here. And uh, we are selling right now in more than 25 countries around the world. And uh, we sold in three years around 25,000 smart and connected devices uh, around the world, as I said before. Well, we in Planeta, so, uh, we design and manufacture uh, wearables, security wearables, and also uh, software uh, solutions uh, for uh, really for tracking and, and, and as a, an ecosystem. All our devices are um, designed for, for people, for child, for elderly people, for pets. Uh, however, the first product to go to market that is about to go to the market uh, these days is, uh, is one device specifically designed for bikes. It's P-Bike. P-Bike is the first e-call and tracking solution for bike. This solution um, is going to allow the user to locate the bike, to protect their bike in case of a robbery. But uh, uh, most important is that uh, it's able to detect any accident that, that the user may have and alert uh, in real time to uh, any contact that they may have in their mobile or even to the emergency services. So um, uh, we have already uh, presented our, our um, solution 
uh, in international events in Eurobike, the, the most important uh, show for the sector in, in Germany, we have already pre-agreements to distribute our, our devices in, in eight countries. And we hope to be, to be, uh, to be on the market uh, by the end of this year. So, so this is what we do. Okay, so at Carriots, we are software providers for companies like my colleagues that develop IoT products. We have a software that runs on the cloud that helps you build proof of concepts and then scale up to hundreds of millions of devices very quickly. Um, so basically, when I started in this business uh, 10 years ago, developing IoT products for large companies, it took us 24 months, 1 million euro as a budget to develop a product. Uh, now, with our software, we have more than 20,000 uh, users registered all over the world. And some of these users have a proof of concept ready to the market in just two or three weeks. And that is something that has completely changed uh, the industry and have to invest uh, a lot of money to develop an IoT product. So uh, companies like these guys are popping on around the world every day, and some of them are using our software. So hi, Diego Pastor from Iomando. So at Iomando, we aim at virtualizing the keys uh, that open physical spaces like uh, locations or assets. Uh, the idea behind is that the key is something that you can lose, that you can forget at home. Uh, so by proposing uh, opening your different assets through your mobile phone, we aim at making sure that you always have your iPhone, iPhone with you. And we know that we, we might lose the keys and we might leave them at home, but the, the mobile home is always with us. So that was our bet at the beginning. Uh, we were just looking at the figures. We have opened more than 8 million doors in our history since two years. And we, just for this year, we opened 4 million doors. I mean, in terms of each opening counts. So that shows that we are really growing very fast. Okay, so as was said, um, disrupting is, is to create disorder. So how did you disrupt your place? How was it before? And what did you do? You can go uh, any order, but uh, what, what did you change in your, in your situation, business situation? Well, so as I've said before, I think things are changing very rapidly. So the world is huge. There are a lot of makers, a lot of people doing technology and products around the world. So, for example, uh, I think 30% of our free users are in India. Uh, they are developing new proof of concepts every day, and some of them goes into real products. Uh, they, so we have democratized uh, or empowered those people to, if they have an idea, at least make something that you want to try on the market to see if it works. So don't, you don't have to have a huge budget, just with a tiny budget, a few weeks of work, you can test that idea on the market. I think that is empowering those makers, those disruptors. For us, for example, disruption is not something that you think before your project. Yeah. Maybe it's something that happens when you are drinking something or you are smoking something. And, uh, but, but it's not only about the product, it's not only about the way to go to the market. Usually it's, it's something with different factors that make uh, your project different. Uh, one disruption for us has been recently, for example, to be in Japan looking at our products in the retailers. This is something disruption for that disrupt for one mm. Spanish company. Mm. I think disruption uh, is not only about doing something new, if not uh, doing better than the than the mm. than, than the competitors. Uh, imagine that the, the uh, Mercadona is a supermarket chain. I mean, they do something that uh, everybody has been doing for a long time, but is doing much better than, than the rest. In our case, the main disruption is coming from the business model, because after all, all our devices are like uh, mini telephones uh, and with an embedded SIM card, etc. So at the moment, all the trackers, that is not the same one, but it's it share the same, the same principles on the back, um, makes the users or force the users to get into a, uh, their telephone operators, get an, uh, into an agreement, yeah, get into a commitment with the telephone operator or maybe with the company by subscribing a, a something, uh, a long-term agreement really. Uh, we have changed completely that. I mean, we are assuming the risk for the users. We have 
uh, we have get into an agreement with, with telephone operators, in this case with, with Owens, as that has better for our project. And we are now able to give service in more than one, in, or now it's in more than 50 countries. Um, and and under, under that, I mean, we are giving the users completely freedom to use our devices, our lines, uh, with no commitment at all, with no contracts, with no, with no uh, regular payments, with anything like that. We assume all that model. And, and, and that's uh, for our, I mean, at least our users assume that as a, as a huge disruption compared to the competence. Well, in, in our case, disruption comes with uh, information. Uh, traditional telecare systems, uh, they all work uh, over uh, landlines. So they, they just can't uh, have voice, con uh, voice, uh, you know, voice communication. Uh, now uh, with uh, 3G lines, uh, 2G lines, I mean mobile phones, uh, you, have, you have completely control over uh, voice uh, data. So basically the, the, the thing that changes uh, our, our solution is, the, is about information. Information of the user, what is he doing, uh, and, and also information for the, for the relatives, for the families in real time. Finally, Neomando, what we believe is that the traditional keys that we have in our pocket are going to disappear. Uh, we believe that that has lo a lot of limitations, like you have to physically handle that key to someone. Uh, it can be lost, as I said before. You can forget them. And you cannot, for example, uh, ask uh, to your key who has used to, to get into where, when, so by virtualizing the keys, we are able to open a new uh, line of uh, needs that we couldn't cover before. Like, for example, being able to authorize one person for uh, uh, an amount of time to access whatever asset or location. Uh, we also are able to destroy uh, that key because in the end you have it in your mobile, but it's also managed centrally. So we are able to say this guy has no longer access to this, even if the key is not handed back uh, to the owner. And in the end, when we think about uh, uh, how costly are the solutions, for example, for accessing a parking and giving a, a, a remote control or whatever, uh, we are 10 times cheaper than installing the central unit, uh, the different remote controls, distributing them, collecting them when they are changing the cause of the different. So in terms of installation cost and maintenance cost, we are really disrupting in terms of what we can do. Okay, and you, you mentioned uh, test and learn, so about innovation. Uh, people say when you, know, when you innovate, you will fail, that's for sure. So what do you think about this and what was your experience maybe? Um, well, definitely if you try, you're going to fail sometimes. Okay, the statistics say uh, if you have 10 R&D projects, uh, eight of them are going to fail, one is going to kick off. And the other one goes zombie. Okay, you don't know if you're gonna kill it or not. Uh, my point of view: uh, for a long time, I had also had a, an R&D budget. So if you have one million euros to allocate to R&D, it's better to split it into ten projects of 100k than just make one bet of one million euros. So definitely, that for that you need to lower the cost of what what are you investing in a single project. Okay, so that's key. So. Make, uh, tools like carriers help you do that. So definitely, if your cost for doing R&D is lower, you are going to be, the same budget is going to be allocated in a much larger base. So and for example, the metrics that we have is half, 50% uh, of the largest proof of concept that our uh, free users make on carriers just fail on, on that proof of concept uh, phase. Then half of them goes into real pilot phase, and from that pilot phase, 20% uh, goes into larger scale. So definitely, you have to embrace failure. The only thing is that that failure uh, has to be uh, low on the cost. Limited, yeah. yeah. And, and I would complete that, uh, Miguel, in our case. We do development of products, but those products need to go to the customers. So sometimes what you face is that you have designed a product, and when you're going to testing or piloting the product, it doesn't work. For us, the key thing is that we learn from it those experiences, that we capitalize on the feedback from the customer, the technology, and that we are able to, to very quickly reorient our strategy to make sure that uh, that specific connection needs to be put in place to make it work in a very, for example, adverse environment, like in the middle of nowhere when we have a parking in the middle of nowhere. We need to innovate and, and think about different solutions that could 
fulfill that, that need. No? So for us, it's just a question of learning and improving the product and the experience of the users through the use of innovation. Uh, in, uh, I think that for a startup that is creating something new, that is innovating, I mean, that's, of course, there's a lot of risk and, and you're going to fail for sure. But um, I think you need to share uh, and to partner with the people around you, uh, with your clients, with your users, with your providers. You need to, you, you need to share the, the success and also the failure in, in the case of, you have to admit it, you have to be completely transparent about that. That's always for sure. But if you are creating something new, if you are innovating, if you are a, a small company, a small, a small team, um, you need to partner with all that people that are going to be using your product and that, that are going to be helping you to, to, to produce them. So somehow get into a partnership with them, uh, ask them for their help. And, and, and help them be, 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 um, be really uh, good in the time of, of share success with them. But that's going to help you a lot when uh, something goes bad. Where if you are completely transparent, uh, if you keep them informed at all time, if you keep them on, on the same line with you, I mean, that's going to help you to, uh, to go over the, any failure that you may have. I, I think uh, you need to fail. Uh, if you want to have the right product or the right service to the market. I mean, it's the, the best way to improve your product, your service. And uh, but usually, it's many people say that you need to fail many times before to be success, but be careful. You have, as yeah. a startup, you have not a lot of possibilities to make failures, you know, before to be success. Uh, in our case, uh, because our product is a little bit strange, we have hardware, we have software, we have a platform in the cloud, we have many fillers. But uh, usually, this uh, helps to us to develop best product or better product to the market and to improve them in order to provide a better product and a, and a better service. Well, I totally agree. And um, I, I'd say that uh, fast launching is, is uh, in my opinion, the most important thing to, to avoid. Uh, to avoid failure, or at least to mitigate it. So the sooner you launch, the 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 sooner you you will get the feedback, and the and the potential failure will be will be smaller. So when we first started, our first version of Sensovida was in the market three months after we, we we started thinking about it. So we started getting real clients, real customers, and uh, starting getting feedback. So that mitigates for real the, the, the potential failure. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, partners, and um, that's my, s my next question. Uh, how can um, big brands or very important players in the ecosystem uh, help you uh, arrange as an accelerator, or any big brand uh, can help you? What's, what's the role of that? I think about, uh, I mean, for instance, in our case, we, after all, we are a security solution. So people, uh, we need people to trust us, really. And to get the confidence from a company that no one knows in the, in the beginning, you need to, to partner with someone who somehow uh, uh, give you that prestige that you need. And in this case, for instance, we are also, because it, it, we have a lot of synergies with insurance company, we have a partners with insurance, and we distribute those insurance with us. It's not the same that uh, we distribute uh, an insurance backed by, <coughs> I don't know, AXA, for instance, that by ourselves. And that association with that name, that association with Orange in terms of communication. I have clients who came uh, to us and say, okay, but who's going to, uh, who's going to, um, uh, Keep all your telecommunication infrastructure up. It's going to be you. No, sorry. We have a partner with uh, international communication that is giving us all their support. We are able to give all this because of them. We are so, and for a security uh, manufacturer a company like we are, uh, that association is, is critical. Yeah, for us, for example, uh, the it's something also that where you need to be careful because sometimes you invest a lot of time in one big brand or one big partner. And uh, if you don't find the right partner, many, many times you are going to invest uh, a lot of your resources, a lot of your whatever. 
and uh, for them you are like a small piece in the world, you know. Uh, to go with, uh, as he said, confidence in the, in the world is very important. When you try to sell outside uh, Spain or also in Spain with uh, your small brand as a startup, you need to have a partner who help uh, to the other possible partners to uh, believe in your project, in, in, in your products. So you have to find the right partner. For example, Orange Fab for us is a very, very interesting program because it is like a business program. I mean, it's not just uh, uh, yeah, accelerate. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, it's not about uh, and it's the right way. So f with Orange, for example, we invest, maybe it's the, the bigger partner, <laughs> one of the bigger partners where we are working now, and uh, maybe it's the partner where we need to invest less time. It's something amazing because right now we are working with Orange in the retailers and it's, it's something amazing for us. With Son and other companies, we needed a lot of time to make zero. So it's something where you have to be careful. Actually, you mentioned something very important and the big difference between big company, big corporates and startup is time. Yeah. At Orange Fab, you always imagine two yeah, dimensions exactly. completely different for Yeah, and the time to worlds. take decision in big partners usually is completely different at the time that the startup needs. And it's something uh, crazy sometimes. You know, you need to wait and wait and wait the, their process. And it's something that sometimes can kill your project. You know, if you focus your business just for with one or two big partners, maybe are amazing in the market and everybody knows. And uh, maybe your risk is going to be so high for, for your project. And, and also the, the figures that are important. So when you go with a partner like Orange in an accelerator program, it reminds you that you have to look at the market uh, by the number of zeros. So definitely, when you start a, uh, when you start a startup, uh, <coughs> you're happy with your first bunch of customers. It might be 10, 100. Uh, but we, when you find it when a, with a large corporation, you have to take a look at the market by millions, you know, hundreds of millions. And you have to be prepared for a process where your uh, company acts like a printing machine. So imagine that your company is a book and Orange is a printing machine and you're going to photocopy that book up to hundreds of millions of, mm. of copies. And for that, you have to be prepared. You have all the process to be automated. Uh, you, don't, you cannot make uh, uh, custom design uh, uh, like if you do protoportet. So uh, it's the same thing. So definitely accelerated programs, you have to be prepared because it's going to be like a turbo that is going to launch your startup. Actually, yeah, you're right. in, in our case, in Yomando, we had a strategy what, what that was more focused on the B2B business uh, with some insights already in the B2C market. Definitely, Orange is up for us the opportunity to make sure that our product can be constructed. Um, we can have a feedback from uh, your distribution channel and to make sure that potentially in some pilots we can test the solution, get feedback from that and make sure that we improve our concepts and potentially get a new channel for distribution. So definitely for us, it's, it's key on one side, on the distribution channel. And then in terms of par partnership with key actors, uh, we need for sure to make some alliance and we are building them with uh, lockers, for example, mm. with uh, intelligent lockers, uh, with services companies potentially, because there are lots of potential synergy between being access to, accel to access a house and, and providing some services associated to that. So definitely big companies can bring us a lot of you know, broadening our offering and make sure that we bring more value. Okay, and um, so after doing business, which is key, and actually that's the, the focus of Orange Fab, that is the, the funding part. Um, what would you recommend to a startup about fundraising? Um, there are plenty of tips, but uh, maybe you have one in mind like, with your experience. I mean, in, in my case, it's, it's everything about uh, scaling. Right. So okay. at the beginning, for us, it was key to be able to build a minimum viable product. For that, we needed to invest in some architecture, some cloud solution, some applications, and we need to prove that, okay, that miracle that I push a button and, and, and the lock is open could happen. So for us, it was really dimensioning all the roadmap from that step into going a step <coughs> further and diversifying your products, being able to attack other markets, and then definitely in our view is to go and think big. So uh, how can we get and become an international uh, actor in the opening doors and opening whatever location or, or asset uh, industry? So definitely that's where you need to, to go to other rounds. 
Well, I think there are two types of investors, really, to simplify things. One of them is the one that believes in an idea and wants to bring it to life and help you go to the market to see how the market reacts. Uh, that's the early stage. And then there's the growth phase that is, okay, I have a product. I, I can show that it really works, that the market is demanding. And the money that I'm getting on a Series A, Series B, is like a tube of power where you're going to boost enormously. Uh, so the problem is uh, all the phases of this startup have to be prepared for those different phases of investors. Yeah, it's a lot of planning in advance. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, I mean, uh, as a startup, I think the first thing you should do if you are starting to think about that is, is to don't believe yourself. I mean, all the plans you are going to do, uh, all the forecasting you are going to do in the beginning, uh, that's not going to be for real. So you are going to need more money, you are going to uh, need more time. So you have to be very careful on that. And uh, another important uh, advice that I think is, is quite critical is that start planning your capital needs with time. Because it get it, uh, if you need to go to, to business angels or to venture capital, it's, uh, re it's really important that they get to know you. And that's a process that takes some time. So just, uh, although if you don't need the money right now, but if you are planning to need that money in six months, one year time, start doing some kind of lobby. Start, start presenting yourself, presenting your project. And it's, uh, the best way to look for money is uh, not needed. So if you go and, and I, I'm doing this, that, okay, so you need money, no. That is disruptive, okay? That, that, that is disruptive, no. I don't need money now. But I'm starting to, um, to, to, to get the feeling that uh, the demand for my product is gonna increase a lot and I may need it sometime. Why? Do you want it to keep you, uh, to keep, uh, to keep you informed about this? And that, that's a disruptive way. But the, 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 the main thing here is just plan it in advance because you are going to need time. Yeah, for us, yeah, for us it's very <coughs> important. Uh, in the first stage of our project, uh, we had good luck. And we didn't find just uh, investors. We, we, we found friends, we, ha we found people, we found partners who help uh, our project. So I think in the first stage, it's very, very important to find the right people, not just financial investors mm. who are thinking in, in, in money and just money. People who is thinking in the project, who, uh, people who can help you to go to the market in the right way, way. people who can save you some fillers, <laughs> as we said before. And uh, in next stage, uh, I think it's very, very important to think big. I mean. Uh, it is usual for a Spanish startup, I think, to try to be here f uh, looking for investors just yes, in Spain in first, second, or third uh, business angel uh, rounds. I think from the, from the beginning, you have to think big, you have to go outside, and you will find uh, more valuation, you will find bigger investor, and you will find the right partner to go in your project. So uh, find partners, not just investors in the first stage, and think big after that. Okay. Uh, I said that uh, finding some traction or showing some traction is the, is the key matter before going to, to, to see uh, uh, an investor, uh, whether or not you have already a product in the market. I mean, when we started with Senso Vida, we started selling people uh, with, a, with a sheet of paper, uh, and ask them to, to sign if they wanted to, 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 to buy Senso Vida uh, with a 20% uh, um, discount, but we didn't have nothing. But that is an is a interesting proof for an investor, even for a, a business angel, to, to, to give you money. Okay, I see we have a, a few minutes left. If, I don't know if there are some questions in the room. I have a few questions, but if somebody in the room, anyone? Oops. Sorry? Yes? I have a question about the wait, 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 wait. They're going to pass you a microphone. Thank you. question about the Spanish uh, ecosystem. You, you, there seems to be, without pointing any particular company, um, a great, great uh, bunch of engineering talent here. And, and you know, ideas now are, are, are pretty global. So, what, what actually fails in terms of scaling? What would be 
making you a global success as a business uh, uh, that you are not achieving? Would it be the size of the market at this point, uh, the type of investors that you have? Uh, I mean, all of your businesses are very interesting and, and they could be global, you know, Nest could be one of them and the other one could be whatever, you know, the next Raspberry Pi success or whatever it is, there's a lot of interesting angles. So what is actually, you know, maybe not allowing you to do that uh, or, or what would be necessary for that to happen? We have Thanks. one minute. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me start. I think the first thing is uh, that you need to believe yourself. I work in a very big company full of very talented people, uh, full of ideas and being able to attract uh, other people around them. But sometimes it's just a question of, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I feel scared about failing, so that's the first thing. And I think in Spain we have a culture where failing is seen as a bad thing, okay? And you know, as we said before, we need to fail in order to improve. And if you see, most of the people that have achieved great things have failed before, so don't be scared about that. The second thing, I participated in a study for, for one uh, ONG, a uh, non-profitable organization that was from the UK, and they were really uh, uh, very surprised that in Spain we have uh, very lo lots of difficulties in creating your own business, like uh, all from the administration point of view, from the ecosystem that we need to put in place with investors. We, don't, we are not very well you know, uh, supported by the ecosystem, that's true. Uh, I think that goes even from the, from the school. I mean, uh, when we teach our people, our engineers, we don't have any, at least I studied civil engineering, I had no subject concerning entrepreneurship. What do you need to do? And you see people without the, the, the training that we had, that they're succeeding, and that just had the, the willingness to, to succeed, and nobody's telling you that, and you just end up, as you say, being a very good engineer, working for other people who potentially had the vision, didn't have the training, but they had the vision, the persistence to achieve it, and, uh, and that's, so that's right. I, I went to Paris to study and I saw a completely different uh, uh, mentality. In terms Actually, of it started at school before, civil, I mean, before engineering school. Normal school, yeah. it's true <laughs> that now the, even the shift is, uh, is changing. It's you, changing, you can right? fail. You can fail. So it goes really from the ground. So from the school, we need to incentivate people and to, to tell them it's not, it's not bad if you try and you fail and do it because you have the good skills, uh, people. And as you said, we are a global, uh, we're in a global business uh, through the cloud computing, uh, uh, Internet of Things. We can manage from Spain a very profitable business in the US, in Asia, whatever. So there's no geographic uh, boundaries today. All right. Any more questions? We actually ran out of time, but uh, okay. they're oh, going to be you. around. Yes? Yeah, no, they're going to be around. I okay, want to say. I have one last question. If, if oh, I, of course, if of I course. one minute, which sure. is what would be your number one advice for entrepreneur and founder? Anybody? Well, <laughs> I, I think I'm not in position, I'm in a strong position to, to, to give advices. But I, I'd say that uh, uh, plan less and do more. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, for me, uh, try to make your MVP as soon as you can and test and test and test before to make any other thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you, if you want to, to do a startup, do it. I mean, don't try it. Do, don't start with the, with the idea of, okay, if I fail, I can do something else now. If you, if you are going to do it, do it. I mean, be, be ready to, to fail because you're going to fail and be ready to be there. Because if, if you, if you want to do it, I mean, it's possible. And the, the only one who fails is the, the only one who really, I mean, uh, resigns. Uh, which suggests that you focus on one thing, mainly. You're going to try to do a lot of things. You're going to fail. Don't be afraid to say no. So I have, but in, my, in my mail app, I have uh, a draft mail that says, thank you very much, but I, we are not interested. It is out of focus. That is sending, I think this most so focus, common. focus, focus, focus. Yeah, uh, thank you, but it's outside okay. of our focus. So don't be afraid to say no. And uh, really, if you focus, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, it is not a problem really to shift uh, your vision. So you, you focus, if you fail, <coughs> you can always shift your vision, but you, but you have to focus. And the last I would say is, uh, as you said before, think big. I mean, think globally, think uh, that there are no frontiers and that if someone could do it, why not you? 
So if you're going to do it, do it big. Okay, so we can okay. thank a yeah. wonderful okay. panel. Thank you. Thank you to thank you Miguel, Miguel, Javier, Diego, Fidel, and of course our star moderator from Orange Fab, Eric Tartanson. Thank, thank you. you.